Well, welcome, folks. Again, we are at Podcast 2.2.2. Today, we're talking about low gradient streams. That means streams that aren't very steep in the way they're pitched. If you look at my picture down here, you will notice that it is a, like a flat river. And the river is very flat because there's not much gradient, not much a slope to the, the, uh, to the river. And so we saw that in the last podcast where I was out running and we saw a low gradient stream. This, of course, is a much larger stream over here that we're looking at. So let's dive into the content today. All righty. Okay. What are the characteristics of low gradient streams? Well, first of all, interesting thing about this, the interesting thing is they erode sideways instead of downward for high gradient streams. Because there's not much slope to the land, as the uh, low gradient stream curves, they have this sort of snaky pattern oftentimes, they will erode the banks, because as it hits over here, it's gonna erode the bank. So there's as not as much energy erodes downward. Most of the energy of the stream erodes sideways. That effect is, is it causes wider and wider valleys. And so it creates the valleys and makes them wider and wider and not so narrow, all right? All right, now that creates an interesting concept. Here's a word I want you to kind of understand. It's called a meandering stream. That's a stream with a channel that curves and loops back and forth on a wide floodplain. So here we have some mountains, and these mountains, of course, the energy or the water will flow downhill, and eventually it creates this huge valley, and we can't even see it on this side. And here is all that water gets collected into the stream, and it meanders. Each curve, by the way, here is called a meander bend. All right, because it's a very flat valley here next to these huge mountains. This is the Snake River. Okay, now if we look at this here, here's the evolution of a meandering stream. All right, watch the first step right there is you just have a curved stream. Hello. All right, my pen is gone. I don't know why. So you can see how the curve, the, the stream, you can see how the stream right here, well, I lost it. Let's see if I can get it back. All right. There we go. It starts out in this very typical S pattern right here. But this, the, uh, the green stuff is the deposition, and it brands, bends more and more and more. Eventually, it'll cut this thing off and makes what's called an oxbow lake. So it's pretty fascinating how that works. Let's take a look at here. Erosion, deposition. All right. So erosion happens where the red is. So erosion. And this picture is red, and the green is deposition. That's the green. So if you see right here, we see the green. This was layer after layer of deposits of sediment as it went down here, and it's eroding this section. And it, wherever the bend is, it erodes, and it creates um, these sort of C-shaped lakes, which are called oxbow lakes. All right. Let me tell you about an interesting situation. This is this, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but Simiton has a problem. Okay, it is located in the Brazos River floodplain, approximately 25 miles west of Houston, Texas. Are you from Texas? Put your hat on. All right, so we've got a map, and we have a problem right here. As you can see, this uh, lake is meandering. And uh, now note the distribution of the 100-year floodplain. That's the darker green. Can you see a problem? So in 100 years, this whole area will get um, filled up with water at certain times. The problem is, is if you happen to have a house that's right here, well, you've got an issue. That's exactly the problem right here. Now, if you see that, we're going to zoom into that bend. And if you zoom into the bend, this is the bend right here. See, it goes way out over here, right? Guess what? Each of these is a road, and there's a house here, and there's a house here. In fact, hey, here's the picture down here. Check it out. There's someone spread right there. They got the house there and the house there. But the problem is, is at some point, this river is going to want to join up right here. And this right here is that Oxbow Lake. You can see someone's wonderful house right there. And they're going to have an issue, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, here it is in 1958. Here's the Simiton area of 1958. Each of these little places is a little house, and you can see our roads right through here and here. You can see all this wonderful thing. So notice how big this gap is. Now we go to 1995, and um, you might notice here they have an issue. In fact, you can kind of see the roads. There's three roads here, one, two, three. Here there's uh, 
one, two, three, four, a uh, five. So uh, if you live right in this era, you're done. I mean, I'm sorry, it's over. So they have a problem. Here's the evolution, the, the, the bend. Like this is the expectation. Look how it's shrinking. It's going to crush those little, oh, boom, done. So the water's going to overtake those houses. I would not build my house right there. Um, I said I would not build, but guess what? They did. <laughs> so they're bomb. Uh, in their history, yeah, problem. Okay. All right, here's uh, another way to look at it. This is probably the best picture for you to draw. This is the, um, the meandering stream, nice and straightish. And then you get a little bit of a curve, right? And then the curve gets a little bit more bent and more bent and more bent. And this is, of course, the Simiton area uh, type deal. And eventually, boom, it cuts it off. And anybody who's right here, their house, yeah, got overtaken by the river. This is then called an oxbow lake. So what's an oxbow lake? That's the C-shaped lake we're talking about. Is um, a crescent-shaped body of standing water situated in the abandoned channel, oxbow, of a meander after the stream formed a neck cut off and the ends of the original bend were plugged up by fine sediment. And so here's a, I don't know where this is at, somewhere in Russia, we can see an oxbow lake here, and another one here, and another one here. There's quite a few of these oxbow lakes everywhere in this particular situation. We can see one's about to happen right here. You're gonna get another, this is gonna become one after a while. This one's got a while to go right here, but you're gonna get an oxbow lake there at some stage. You can see the fine sediment down here. So yeah, that's what an oxbow lake is. Now, how about streams in the hydro hydrologic cycle? Hydro stands for water, by the way. All right. Um, what affects stream discharge? Now, we're talking about discharge. Well, basically, what's going to cause you to have more or less water? Okay. Well, precipitation, meaning well, lots of rain. Loss of, to groundwater, so some of the water seeps into the groundwater. We'll talk about that later. Evaporation, of course. That depends, on, of course, on the heat. If it's hotter, it'll evaporate more. Dispersion, diversion to the municipal supply. That means people are drinking the water, using it for their crops or whatever. Snow melt and the release of water from reservoirs. So these are the things that uh, affect how much water is in a stream. So we kind of change subjects a little bit after we talk about the meandering stream. Now let me talk about groundwater. A lot of people don't understand this, but groundwater is a huge issue or a huge source of water. Uh, for those of us here who live in the Woodland Park area, we do not have any reservoirs that we're getting water from. Now the reservoirs near us, but our water is primarily coming from the ground. They're pumping it out of the ground. Where in the world is the water in the ground? So let me kind of look at that from a pictorial. This would be a good picture to um, put down. This is something called an aquifer. So we have trees, and as it rains, the water hits the ground. And then it filters down and soaks into the ground. And there is, as it turns out, on the, under here, at some point, there's going to be some rock that's impermeable. That means the water can't get down here. And so this whole area right here, they call the saturated zone, it is filled with groundwater. That means sort of wet. So if we go back to our picture, right here, as you dug down, you found water down here, right? You probably played in the sand, and you dig down far enough, and you reach the water table, the level of the water. So the water table right here is the level at which the water rises. This is not saturated ground, but here below that. So if I could shoot a well down here, you know, and collect the water would seep into the well, I could pump it out, and I could use it to uh, drink or water my houses, water my houses, water my plants with, or whatever it might be. As it turns out that most rocks have what we call crevices or just empty space and that empty space is filled with the water because of the rain and it turns out if you have surface water that's just where the land this would be a lake or a stream or whatever is where the um uh it's where you're below the water table or at the water table right there okay so the definition of aquifer is a layer of porous substance means it's kind of holy that contains and transmits groundwater. When water can flow directly between the surface and the saturated zone of an aquifer, the aquifer is unconfined. The deeper parts of the unconfined aquifers are usually more saturated since gravity causes the water to flow downward. This really describes that entire picture that we had just a minute ago. So you need to kind of attach this to that uh, diagram, you know, in the stream right here, that whole deal. Yeah. You may need to push pause to copy all this down. <laughs>